Alright, this is EWGF, and in today's video we're going to discuss uh, a few obscure mechanics and some inner workings of the game. There are a lot of things you may or may not have known about Dark Souls. Uh, some of them aren't increasingly obvious. Uh, we're going to discuss a few of them in this video. The first thing we're going to discuss is Swing Commitment. The first thing we're going to discuss is uh, some mechanics about Swing Speed. First of all, in Dark Souls there's two different types of Swings. There's like a normal vanilla swing, and there's nothing special about that, and some swings have this special property. It's called shortage. Now, what this is, is when you whiff on a swing that has the shortage property, it adds a little animation on the end that makes it slower, more punishable. Now, what you want to do with a swing that has a shortage property is basically either get a hit or get a block. Secondly, um, there's a little exploit we're going to discuss. We're going to wrap these two topics kind of into one because they are sort of related in a way. Anyways, the second thing is if you use block, you can actually cancel a fair bit of your swing animation. So what this means is for larger weapons, you can have up to potentially four different swing speeds. Uh, we're going to take a look at those right now in this vid, and I'm going to break it down a little bit more. This is our two-in-one sort of example video outlining both shortage and uh, block cancel. Now, all these attacks are the same. It's uh, one-handed scythe R2. And in the highlighted first frame here, we can see I had the advantage of repelling off my opponent's shield and using a block cancel. This was the fastest of all the attacks. It had the least amount of downtime after I threw the swing. This is frame two, and in this example, it was just uh, my scythe attack repelling off the shield. It's the second fastest of the four swings. In the third frame, we have an example of shortage. Now, um, this particular shortage was cut short by uh, a block cancel, which is nice. Um, but this is kind of an example of what you're going to see if you swing with a larger weapon, and it goes both unblock and you miss. Just uh, something to keep in mind. Frame 4 here, we have an example of like a full shortage. Um, nothing fancy, just uh, this is exactly what you're going to see if you uh, swing a larger weapon and you miss or it doesn't get blocked. Let's take a look at that same clip at 30% uh, speed again, uninterrupted, and uh, one last time at 100%. We're going to discuss stun lock variations and how stun locks work. Within a specific type of weapon, say great swords, there are four factors in determining stun locks. One, does the swing itself warrant a stun lock? Two, the overall upgrade level of the weapon. Three, the upgrade tree of the weapon. And four, the swing speed of the weapon when compared to others in the class. In this comparison, we've got uh, four weapons. We got a basic uh, plus zero man serpent great sword, a plus fifteen man serpent great sword, a plus five enchanted man serpent great sword, and a plus five uh, large sword of moonlight. And we're gonna take a look at this again at thirty percent speed, and I'm gonna pause it, and we're gonna discuss a few things as I go through the video. This is our basic man serpent grade sword, and after the first swing connects, I can easily roll away. Just a heads up, all these tests are done without poise, without wolf ring, no poise of any sort to skew the tests. Anyways, and this is our easiest stun to escape. The second escape comes from a plus five enchanted man serpent grade sword. Now, yeah, I still get out after the first hit, but the thing you don't see is I actually still take a hit too. And I was able to reproduce these results over and over and over again consistently without variation. In this example, it's our uh, plus 15 Man Serpent Greatsword, and um, 
this is kind of similar to the plus five enchanted except you get a, one extra hit so it's two hits and you can roll escape the third hit but it still kind of connects although it doesn't interrupt your roll In this case, we're using a Moonlight Greatsword for this demonstration, and it makes pretty much a drum-tight stun. Um, it'll keep going as long as you have the stamina to swing it, and the reason for that being is it's actually slightly faster than a Man Serpent. You can't exactly see it, but when I show the clips together, um, without interruption, you'll kind of get an idea. The next thing we're going to talk about is a handy little trick, it's called Toggle Escape. Now what this does is allow you to escape stun locks. It's fairly simple in execution really, you just tap uh, the D-pad to swap weapons, or shields, whatever's in either hand. Anyways, what happens is this effect replaces the stun and allows you to roll out. It's uh, pretty simple, the only tricky thing is each stun has its own kind of timing for it, and it takes a while to get used to. What we're going to look at briefly now is a uh, slightly more advanced technique, it's called Instant Block. And it's, uh, this is an old hat from uh, Demon Souls actually. Now essentially how it works is you tap Block um, right before you're hit with a swing. And instead of performing a normal block where you're immobile for a second, you'll do an Instant Block where you can still move freely. It's pretty advanced stuff, um, not because it's the technique's difficult, but simply because the timing is like so precise. Um, you're almost better off trying for parries if you got the timing to do this. The only big difference is it's a lot safer than the parry, and you don't commit quite as hard. Anyways, it's uh, the best use of it's for locking in a strafe stab. But um, now take a look. It's uh, we got it at normal speed, and we got it again at 30% for the highlights. Interesting attack. In the last part of this video, we're going to look at something called Build Up Reset. And what this is is a way of uh, resetting your bleed meter. It's uh, sort of interesting. How it works is it's based on phantom hits. And basically what happens is when you're hit during a roll invincibility, you occur build up as per normal. However, if you proc a wound, a bleed wound, during roll invincibility, what happens is you, you get the wound and you'll get the notification of it, but you don't actually take any damage. Um, it's pretty handy, actually, if you're, if you're really close to a bleed, just uh, you simply walk up to your opponent, wait for them to swing and roll back, and you'll reset your meter. That's pretty much it for this week. I'd like to thank Demon Chasers, Meister, The Winged, and your grandma for helping me out with the vid. I'd also like to thank Jumi for dropping in for a couple casuals.